Hello, this is Kathleen McKee of Olean's.com Machine Embroidery Art. Lesson 38 Digitizing for Puffy or 3D Foam. In this lesson, I'm going to try to highlight the main guidelines you need to digitize for puffy or 3D foam. Since uh, the foam is the last thing you add in a design, you need to digitize all the regular or background elements first. You'll also need to program a stop on your embroidery machine so you'll have time to place your foam. Second, you need to increase the thread density over all the puffy elements. We're talking almost double to ensure coverage and the perforation of the foam. Three, in most cases you're going to need to really increase that pull compensation if aspect ratio is a concern in your design. Four, you're going to turn off the half stitch. I'll explain that later. Five, you need to cap any ends that are opened that are not perforated, and I'll explain that later. And lastly, before you sew the foam, you need to make sure it's really tacked down well so it won't be flipping and flopping all over the machine when you're sewing, on, sewing it out on it. So for this example, I'm going to use a keyboard text, and I'm going to use a true type keyboard text, not one of the built-in ones. And I've chosen, you can use built-in ones, but I thought this was a nice rounded one. Uh, you'll notice when you first start digitizing for uh, Puffy, that rounded objects and text always seem to come out better and look better than straight or angular text and objects. Not that you can't digitize Puffy and straight or angular, but it just takes a lot more editing, a lot of back and forth uh, to the computer and to get your registration correct. So with this true type uh, font, I'm going to type in all caps puffy. Another thing you might have noticed about keyboard text, be they built-in fonts or true types like what we're using, they're not always digitized all that great. So uh, while PE Design Next has a lot of editing capabilities with the, uh, their fonts, you can uh, push on the edit tool and you can move it, you can rotate it, do all kinds of things. You can change the color. Uh, it, so it gives you a lot of, uh, of editing uh, ability. However, it's not going to help me in this area here. So what I need to do is I need to select this text and you notice how it selects all the letters when it's uh, in the text mode. And then I'm going to go under my text tab under attributes and I'm going to convert it to blocks. Now you see all of these letters are each their own separate element. And I can edit those elements with complete control now. The first thing I'm going to do is fix this area that wasn't digitized well. So I'm going to get my uh, edit tool. Let's take a look too. Let's get a little closer. Should have done that first. And uh, I can see this is the problem area here. They're not going straight back and forth across. So I'm going to select this edit point and I could either push my delete key on the, my keyboard or I can right click it and delete it that way. So I'm going to select this edit point because this also go in the counterpoints over there. So I'm going to select this, right click, and then delete. This next edit point's counterpoint is over here, so all I'm going to do with it is just pull it as directly straight across from it as I can to straighten out those stitches. I'm going to do with the same with this point to its counterpoint. And now we've got them pretty straight. I'm happy with that. Alright, so now that I have that area fixed, the next thing I need to do is increase the density. Uh, so instead of clicking on each one individually and going to sewing attributes, I'm going to click and drag and select all of them. Go to sewing attributes and I'm going to increase this density. And PE Design 7, as high as it's going to go, is 7 point lines per millimeter. Uh, 
and that's going to be fine for this application. If you're digitizing a really large puffy area, that might not be enough thread to cover to give proper coverage over the foam. So uh, the only alternative you have in that case is uh, to either sew over it twice. It doesn't have to be as high a density, but you might have to uh, go over it twice to give that full uh, thread coverage that you're going to need. Okay, notice that I do not have the half stitch checked. The half stitch is a great little tool to use uh, when you need it. What it does is it pulls out your stitches halfway in, in tight areas where the stitches tend to bunch up. And that's a good thing, but with Puffy, you're going to have to take your chances with those thread breaks because if you don't, uh, not only will it flatten the foam in those areas, but it's not going to cut out a nice little uh, area here where you can pop that foam out. So it looks pretty good right now except for capping the end. However, there's one more thing. These little lines that when your uh, tech sews out, it, co it, it connects one end to the other so it can sew everything out. Um, I'm all right with those, but this, because they're going to help tack down the foam <clears throat> before the letters sew out. However, I do think the stitches are placed a little too close together. So while everything is still selected, I'm going to go over to my run pitch, and I'm going to increase them. Oh, I'm going to what? That need to be that. I get to about that should be enough. And now you see how they're pulled so far apart. Now you can uh, use your edit tool and and delete some more of these if you want but it looks fine for me it's going to tack down that foam and uh, without flattening it so the last thing I need to do right now is uh, cap my ends you see the foam is not going to pull out here here or here there's too wide a gap so we need to cap those edges and the caps need to come before the letter sews out we do this with a manual punch a, a straight manual punch. And since the last uh, density we used was 7, this is also going to be applicable to the uh, manual punch tool as well. So I am going to do my top, bottom, top, bottom, double click. And I'm also going to select that before we go any further so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to change that color to red. Okay. So you see how when this is finished sewing, it jumps over to from where the, uh, the, the Y ended. But when we move this before the P, because we want it to sew out before the, the, the letter does, you see the, ch the jump stitch changes. It's going here. That's where the letter is going to start. So I'm going to get my running stitch. And you can just go right across because it's all going to be covered up anyway with the... and double click and now look what happens to this jump stitch when I move it at there you see it goes away so when it sews out it's going to sew out this first and it's going to go up to here and then it's going to sew out the rest of the P alright so let's go ahead and cap this U and I'm going to go top bottom top bottom I'm going to go to my running stitch, or you can keyboard the letter V. Try to get as close to the edge as you can. I'm not being real careful here because I don't want to take up too much of your time. All right, and then we're going to go to the straight block again, or keyboard the letter Z. And double click. Okay, so let's see where the jump stitch goes when we move this before the U. Okay, it's showing me that uh, the jump stitch is going to go from there and that's where the letter is going to start. So we need to continue a running stitch from where the last stitch was placed. And double click. Now see where it, what happens to this jump stitch when I move it here. It disappears. So that's going to sew out all smoothly. And you just go uh, uh, through doing this with every letter. I'll, I'll do one more. We're going to do this F. 
and we're going to cap this end. And I'm going to keyboard the letter V, v for uh, Victor to do my running stitch. Then I'm going to keyboard the letter Z for Zebra to get my manual punch. Keyboard V for Victor. And then the letter Z for Zebra. Double click. And then of course we're going to move that above the F. And then we'll do the same thing looking for the, where the jump stitches are so you can eliminate those. But the one thing you need to do also before you, uh, is let's look at this real closely. Get my edit tool. We want this to meet up. See, all these are going to be where a needle is going to be placed and it's going to perforate, perforate it really well. And I want this to come in a little bit because anytime you use a satin stitch, zigzag stitch, column stitch, whatever you want to call it, they tend to push out beyond uh, wh where you see it on the computer. They'll, the, the stitches will push out like that. We don't want that. So we just want the needle's perforation to be, and we want to be continuous. All right, here there's a that's too big of a gap. We need to get that closer. We want to get that in. And let's see what it looks like on the bottom. So you just go around and correct. Oh, see that that will definitely pooch out beyond the the letter a text. So and also this is we want to get that in like that. That probably has enough room. Okay. And so that's what you do with each letter. So the last thing we need to do is uh, select these caps and just change their change all this to black so that, that when they sew out, it's all going to be one continuous smooth without any jump stitches. And those are essentially the uh, basics of digitizing for Puffy. It does take a bit of, of practice and trial and error. And I can tell you, even after 20 years, I have never digitized for Puffy and had it come out perfect the first time without having to come back to the computer and do some editing of some sort.